Okay, let's put this back on the screen. There we go. Open search serverless now generally available. Now, open search serverless, this got announced, we believe, at reInvent, but now it's got the general, now it's completely generally available. Open search, now that's their, their fork of Elasticsearch. Uh, streamlines the process of running petabyte scale search and analytics workloads without having to configure, manage, or scale open search clusters. So we'll get back to what you said about Java applications taking a lot of memory. <laughs> uh, open search and Elasticsearch is a large Java application. And Correct. having to set this up yourself is cumbersome, having to know how much resources to give it, all of that. That's a real that's a real challenge to do. I mean, it's a really, really neat product. You can do these really fun natural text searches. It's it's worth learning if you're if you're putting up a site, learn open search, but not having to deal with the infrastructure behind it. That is that is pretty exciting. Correct. I think most people don't understand the pain of resharding your your op, your previously elastic search and you know the non serverless open search versions being able to you know to need to reshard it or reorganize all your indexes. It's 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 a huge pain and a huge overhead. And I'm I'm really glad that the serverless solution came about, where you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It gets taken care of, um, and just scaling up. For a lot of folks, uh, open, like there are some services, uh, to be very honest, like there's usually a lot of use of Elastic Cache, Elastic Search, or Open Search in this particular case, um, and databases, where these are services that you need to keep running, but you don't know how to scale. And invariably, everyone ends up over provisioning them. Okay. I love Aurora service, uh, Aurora serverless for a simple reason that it will scale up or down in half ACU increments, depending on what load you have. So if I have no load on my database for eight hours a day, I pay the minimum. I think it comes down to like one and a half ACUs. I think is the minimum. I, I forget what the number is for that, but the, the usage goes down to the minimum required ACUs. And I'm not keeping these large, beastly machines up and running all the time, right? So unless you have you, you have a workload which is just constant, it's just constantly hammering all day, all night on these services, doesn't make sense. The other strategy that makes a lot of sense with these kind of applications, which are basically data stores, I, I think of OpenSearch also like a database. Um, for these applications, multi-tenancy, especially for non-critical workloads, makes so much sense. If you've got serverless and then you pack on multi-tenancy onto it, where you can, instead of having really crazy peak loads, you can stabilize the loads by having a number of completely different and erratic workloads of their own. It's like, you know, when you have a lot of different, it's like a bunch of different sine waves kind of packed into, you know, a relatively flat wave to create a, a you know, a, a system like that. But it's, that's that's something that we use extensively with our Aurora databases. So the um, idea is if you have lots of different products that have different use cases, and say one might be popular in Europe, one might be popular in Asia Pacific, one might be popular in the US. So they're yeah. each experiencing different load peaks at different times. And so, like you said, with the different sine waves, as you add them together, they all average out. And so Yeah, they average out and become pretty flat to look at. And that way, you have more consistent. One, it becomes easier to predict what your costs are going to be, right? And then you can decide how to right size your instances if you're not doing serverless for whatever reason. If you decide to have an instance that you manage yourself, then it becomes way easier to right size those instances. And you can also have, um, you know, in the case of non serverless, you can have better machines uh, that are available for that kind of. Um, you know, for the, that kind of workloads, so it, it's it's kind of a win if you if you do that with these kind of data stores. But I would still say, serverless is something that you should absolutely look at. Okay, not everyone has a whole lot of workloads for each one of these databases. The simplest thing to do is move to serverless, leverage it, use it for whatever you consume. It's the best way to keep controls over your costs. Well, especially for some, like with the multi-tenancy argument, 
especially for something really small, right? Like I'd love to have Elasticsearch indexing, I don't know, a personal website or personal blog where even the, the fixed cost is a little bit more that I'd be willing to pay. But if there's already one running, the marginal cost of adding in my, you know, couple of tens of thousands of words is pretty low relative to what it's already doing. And so being able to have, it, it's not just about the consumption smoothing, but it's opening it up to, to sites where the marginal cost wasn't worth it. It was on its own. Exactly. I mean, look at every dev instance, right? If every developer were to create their own open search instance in AWS and then start, you know, putting in a tiny little load to do, to run their tests, that just doesn't make any sense. You, you much rather have one centralized instance where you can multi, kind of run it like a multi-tenant setup. I mean, we do this with Aurora quite extensively, and I've, I've talked about it, you know, at multiple different forums. Um, when it comes to developer instances or developer databases, we pack in anywhere from two to 4,000 schemas in a single Aurora instance, and it works beautifully. One provisioning an Aurora instance or a database literally takes a couple of seconds because you don't have to bring up an entire instance and get the you know DNS, all of that. You know all of that stuff. All we do is create a new user you know, uh, using API and make that available to any client that requires it. They use it for a minuscule, like developers use of databases compared to the overheads of actually running the database are abysmally low. So they literally just start, you know, dump 10 tables or use DDL to kind of set up 10 tables in the schema, dump minuscule amounts of data into it, do a few read-write tests, and they're done. And for that, to think about the overhead of starting an entire Aurora cluster, you know, waiting for it to boot up, waiting for it to assign IP addresses, stuff like that, create a proxy for it, and then start accessing it. I mean, it's an overkill. It, it is funny with that tendency we have as developers to look at, you know, we have a pattern that we want to use. Oh yeah, we need connection pooling. We need redundancy. And wait, this is for, this could have run off of a Raspberry Pi. Correct. Right? <laughs> this is my personal website that doesn't have a ton of traffic. <laughs> but we have that right. pattern. And that serves us well, right? It's good to have patterns. It's good to be able to generalize. But like you said, yeah. often the consumption are of these tiny little databases. So good right. to be able to smooth those out. Okay. Well, again, back to open search. So we're very excited that this is this is now generally available, and it's still it's going to expand to multiple regions. It's in eight regions. Yep. How do we rate this as as an announcement? So let me let me definitely say simplifies. So anything that goes serverless, I am a huge fan of. So less management, less overhead, less to do. And it simplifies the cost analysis as well. So definitely simplifies. And I would give this uh, a four or a four and a half. I think I can do four and a half because this is there pretty straightforward. Absolutely. And it, this has been a continuum, right? So it's not this in isolation, but this has happened over the course of, of many months of the, the preview release. The talking about it at reInvent, and so taking it in context. Yep. I wish they did quantify, it. like you said, how painful it was to <laughs> to administer your own open search or Elastic Search cluster. So I'm glad. I think <laughs> anyone who's really done it understands it. So it's one of those universal truths <laughs> of anyone who's dealt with with you know, uh, sharding or managing large scale um, open search or elastic search clusters. So yeah, I, I, I think that I, I would, I'd say that's totally fine. Perfect. <laughs> you don't right. have to state it again. <laughs> well, let's take a quick break. And then we come back, we're going to talk about porting advisor. Yep. Public cloud costs going up and your AWS bill growing without the right cost controls. CloudFix saves you 10 to 20% on your AWS bill by focusing on AWS recommended fixes that are 100% safe with zero downtime and zero degradation in performance. The best part? With your approval, CloudFix finds and implements AWS fixes to help you run more efficiently. Visit cloudfix.com for a free